we launch our own podcast. You can listen to it through Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. We'll be covering stories from around the world similar to those you see on this program, but we'll get a bit more personal and candid with our guests and correspondents. So if you're on the go, whether on the train, driving to work, or just out for a run, give us a listen and make sure to subscribe. Search online for CGTN and The Heat Podcast. The Women's World Cup is underway in France and the sports popularity is growing, but women football players are demanding pay equity with men. What's being done about the wage gap? Hello, I'm Arnand Naidu and this is The Heat. The Women's World Cup started in 1991, but back then it didn't have the full backing of FIFA, which was reluctant to allow the World Cup brand to be used for the tournament. Well, a lot has changed. Now the football games are played in huge stadiums and broadcast all over the world. Let's take a look at the growing popularity of the Women's World Cup with CGTN Stéphane de Vries in Paris. The growing popularity of women's football is noticeable here in France, the host of this year's Women's World Cup tournament. Over a million tickets have been sold for those matches in the nine stadiums all over the country. And since the tournament began, people have been gathering on squares in towns and cities like here in Paris to watch the matches on the big screens. Although the men still earn more money than their female colleagues, women's football is now really taken seriously. Of course, the French male team are the current world champions. And the French, they hope that the women can repeat that heroic feat. But the biggest favorites, of course, are the American women, the current world champions. So let's have a look at the popularity of football or soccer in the United States with Owen Fairclough. Well, any doubts that the United States women's team might be unable to defend their title in France might have been laid to rest with their opening game, a 13-0 drubbing of Thailand, surrounded here uh, in downtown Washington, D.C., by many loyal fans cheering there team on. The U.S. women's team have won the World Cup three times. They're going for an unprecedented fourth title in France, and it perhaps reflects the evolution of the game here in the United States. The U.S. and Canada have nearly 16 million registered players, according to a 2014 survey. That's nearly half the global total. And the world champions U.S. women's team have done more with less. European women's soccer gets five times more investment. But even if Team USA does manage to bring an unprecedented fourth World Cup back home with them, or perhaps they face their greatest challenge when they get here. They're embroiled in a class action lawsuit to demand equal pay with their male counterparts who, it should be noted, have never won the World Cup. Well, my colleague Lucretia Franco has the situation on Brazilian women's football. Let's cross to her. And in Brazil, the women's national football team is finally getting fan support and exposure. One reason, TV Globo, the country's largest broadcast network, which is airing the Women's World Cup for the first time ever. Big news for a country where, believe it or not, women were banned from playing football from 1941 until 1979, because the sport was not considered suitable for them. While the women's team has never won a World Cup, it does feature striker Marta Vieira da Silva, simply known as Marta, the all-time leading goal scorer in the tournament, who, along with her team, is hoping for World Cup glory. And now for a look at women's football. On the other side of the world, we turn to Mike Fox in Beijing. I think it's always difficult to assess just how popular women's football is in any country because it's always going to be compared with the men's game. So for example, if you take the women's game in Europe, you know, there is a large gap when it comes to attendances between the men's game and the women's game. In China, I have to admit that that gap is a lot smaller. Obviously, the, the Chinese Super League has a lot more popularity uh, than the women's Chinese Super League, but that gap is certainly smaller and attendances for the Chinese Super League on the women's side have, have been increasing over the years. And I think one of the reasons that is, is because these teams take, you know, they, they don't just um, simply take the men's 
team and then transfer it to you know, a spin-off on the women's side. They're their own clubs with their own cultures, their own identities, their own staff, their own area that they represent. And I think that honestly helps. The women's team have a certainly more hands-on approach and a bit more of a, a stable base to go from. And, and that's you know, probably why they might have had a bit more success in the past you know, at, at major tournaments.